Good morning, guys. Or whenever you're watching this afternoon. I had a thought and I really wanted to, I really like to, would like to elaborate more on this topic. But it's something that's fresh to me that the Lord's kind of revealing some stuff to me. So I'm still in the process of, of learning uh, how to articulate these things um, so that I can be effective. In teaching people I have no idea what I'm doing at whatever area of life they're in but I uh recently I, I, I watched a a concert and I won't go into details but um I was so blown away at the attitude toward it from the people that were singing and it was, it's a, you know, it's a Christian concert. It's not like, it's not like we're just singing about, you know, we're not, it wasn't like a country concert or a rock and roll or it, it blues, jazz. There was no worldly definition to it. It was more, it was, everything was geared toward, toward God, like his praise and worship, you know? And uh, I, I sat and I watched um, this this concert, the show, and I was so like I was so moved by, um, and not in a good way. I was moved um, to a lot of thought and a lot of uh, questions because <clears throat> I've always thought that if praise and worship was going up, it was going to God for for him to come but i was moved in a negative way because i i I expected something different you know um like from what i know and what i've seen and i don't want to say too much because i don't want to i don't want to talk about the actual people or give any information away on what it was or who it was but what was geared toward God was made about self for the most part. And I mean, I watched and it's just like, I was kind of heartbroken because I was like, God's not going to show up, you know? And this is my initial thought. This is kind of how my, how the process went. God's not showing up to this party. Because it's about you and not him. And I know God is no, you know, like his grace and his mercy is sufficient. It's new every morning. Like I get it, you know, like his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. I we quote that scripture almost every time in any of my YouTube videos, but I watched and I was like, I, I don't understand. Like these guys are just having a blast, you know, and some of the people like that were singing We're just doing more runs than a person that has stomach issues. You know? And it was like, some of it didn't even sound good. (laughs) You know? It was supposed to be a show. I mean, I guess I kind of get it. But at the same time, it's not a show because it's not about us. It was about, about him. And inside, I was like, what are we doing? You know? And this is, I can't even say what I was going to say. And so I turned it off. My my wife, she, Sam, uh, she uh, she was like, "Please turn that down." And it was bad, you know. And maybe just the quality of what we were listening to uh, from our phones and stuff, or from my phone. And she's like, "Just turn, can you turn it down, or go in another room with that?" Like it's just kind of cringy in the sense that sense. And so I just turned it off. I had. Uh, my niece, uh, one of my nieces over, say the night was my son, uh, and you know they were having a, a sleepover basically, and and they're both a little handful, but uh, I uh, I turned it off, and so they went to bed, and I turned it. Uh, we got them in bed, and I turned it back on for a minute, just just to see, you know uh how how it ended you know and so 
I skipped toward the end because it was all over, you know, the the stream and was and and God showed up. How in the name of all that's holy? Like, I don't even think the song that was ended on was even about <laughs> about him. But uh, like, he showed up. And I know I've drugged this out for like five minutes or six minutes now. It's been 84 years. But the point that I'm trying to make is, is like, the scripture says where two or three are gathered together in my name, that I'll be in the midst of them. And the crazy part about God is that in a room full of hundreds or thousands of people, if two or three are there in his name, his promise still stands. And some people become a recipient of two or three, two or three people's obedience to come in his name, to come to worship, to come and to adore him, to come and to love on him, to magnify him. And uh, everybody else gets to just be a part of it. Even if their motives were wrong, like God's grace is so good. Like his mercy is so good. Like, and he loves so much, you know, that no matter if they were there for him or just to be seen, he still showed up. And, I, you know, I, I, I watched and like people were in the altars and, and stuff like that, you know, which is it's great. I mean, you know, like I'm not knocking any anything. I'm just trying to part process the things, you know. And uh and I started talking to my wife and I got super emotional because I was like, he's so good that he showed up even when most of the night wasn't even like it wasn't even given to him, you know? It was a, it was a show you know, to record songs and have a good time, you know, and, and it just, and this is maybe my perspective. Maybe it just seemed like it wasn't about him and maybe it was, but just the way that things looked like they were handled. And I'm not trying to be one of those guys that is super critical. Uh, Cause I used to be, and it's a very difficult place to get out of um, because you see things from a different perspective and you, you want to tell your opinion. You don't have to do that. But I'm I'm saying all this to say like God was so good that he showed up, even when it seemed like it wasn't even about him, because obviously two or three were there in his name. And he was faithful to to do what he said he would do. He'd show up. Um and then I was I was sitting there talking to the Lord, kind of after me and my wife discussed it. And Sam is her name, and I keep saying my wife. Uh, she doesn't like that. <laughs> she was going to say her name. And I was like, that's cool. I don't mean to say it, to say my wife. But Sam, after we discussed it, uh, I was kind of meditating with the Lord, and I was like, what is it about it? And, and it's like he said, he was, he said, uh, I'm working when you're sleeping. And he was like, I'm working when you're not talking. I'm working when you're not praying. He was basically saying, I'm God and I know what I'm doing, you know? And uh, <laughs> I was like, you are God and you obviously know what you're doing. They didn't believe in us. God did. And the whole moral of the story is, God began to show me that some churches that don't do it, do everything to the biblical T or some, some worship leaders and stuff that don't do everything according to what would bring the most, um, what would be the most beneficial in their services and, and to, for Jesus to show up and his presence to manifest, he's still working on them. He's still teaching them. 
And my expectation for people is so high because I know how good he is that I am almost like trying to burden them because of what I know. And my job is to never, is to never correct people from how they worship um, God and let them do their thing and let God help them. And me open my mouth whenever God gives me the opportunity to help, but in a way that's going to be fruitful and guiding and not just pressing because we're, we're good about that. You know, you do, you did it wrong. You need to stop doing that. It's this, you know, I don't know if you've ever experienced that. Like I've had experienced it multiple times in my life where it's like, that's wrong. Don't do it that way do it this way. Whenever God has called us to individually be ourselves and to worship him and to, um, and to do it in our own way so that he receives the glory for it. And it's not some, some machine church, you know, where we're all identical, you know? And then the problem that arises after that is you start making people the same. And then if they don't fit, then they leave. So, that's not the way God intended it. So anyways, I it just, it was something that, that, that I feel like the Lord had kind of dealt with me about. And I thought I should share it because I find it very, very freeing to, um, to get out of that hold of, of criticism, uh, being so critical where you see somebody, you see a church and you see like, man, why are they doing that? Well, God's still working on them and they're doing the best they can. Uh, some of them, there's some things that people do. And I'm not, yeah, you know, there's always two sides of the fence. And there's some things people do that obviously don't need to be done. It's just not scriptural and indoor. It's not even, uh, uh, it's not, yeah, it's not scriptural <laughs> and it's definitely not, uh, fruitful. <laughs> uh, but, uh, anyways, I just wanted to talk about that because I think, I think even if you carried that, that subject matter over um, to everyday life. You think about people and what they go through and who they are. And you can realize real fast that they're not like you, obviously. And the way they live life is not like you would live life, but you can't be critical of that person. You don't know what they're going through, number one. But then also, also God's still working on them. God's still trying to grow them and teach them, mold them. Uh, if they're, they're letting him do that, you know, you know and that's the thing. You know, we got to love each other and not expect so much from each other, except that we give God all that we can, you know? So anyways, love you guys. I'll catch you in the next one.